All right, what is up my painting friends? My name is Stoof, welcome back to my painting channel. Today I'm going to create a clematis flower painting. It's gonna look like this, ta-da! And this painting is inspired by Dina Tollefson's Garden Art Challenge, which is a playlist full of other artists' uh, videos of artwork inspired by gardens. So to me, I was, I had a couple ideas thrown out there with either a landscape scene or maybe um, a fountain, but you know what? I was not really feeling that and <laughs> I decided to just go with this close up of these beautiful purple clematis flowers. So that's what we're going to paint today. We're gonna to be using acrylic paints and I'm gonna show you our paints we have here. We have cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow pale, Burnt Umber, Black, Yellow Ochre, Flesh Tint, lots of white. I used up the last little bit of pale or mauve purple that I have. This is Bordeaux Red, which is a really cool red. Magenta, this is Violet, it's called. Uh, so if you, if you don't have Violet, you could mix Ultramarine Blue with a cool red and you might get something similar to that. This is Thalo Blue, this is Chromium Oxide Green, and this one is called Pale Green, um, but that ain't looking too pale to me, so <laughs> if you have like a nice bright green, or if you have a cool green and you mix lots of nice bright yellow, you might get something similar to that. All right, All right so I'm just gonna dip my brush in the water a little bit, and I'm just gonna start with that mauve purple. So I'm not going to use the grid method on this one. I'm just going to eyeball it, uh, but you're welcome to use the grid method if you want. Just take a screenshot of the completed painting and then you would add a grid onto that and use that as your reference image and then add a grid onto your painting. But I am going to put a little dab here, just like a little crosshair where the center of my canvas is. Might be a little lower than that but just so i have an idea of where center is and i'm also going to keep my eye on the center portion of my reference photo while i'm working so i know i'm getting these uh proportions accurate and keeping everything in the generally correct spot all right so this we've got three clematis and these ones all have i'm starting with just the center so I know where to put everything. Just with a, you know, like an onion shape <laughs> to get started. And it's interesting, these flowers, I was looking at them for reference to try to tell you guys how many petals they should have. And I noticed that the ones I'm painting have eight petals, but then I was watching other videos on YouTube where they only have five petals or six petals, and then some of my friends have these flowers and they don't all have eight petals, so uh, I guess these flowers have as many petals as they feel like having. <laughs> and it's weird, because like some of them are even the same species, I thought, like they looked very similar, so it's very interesting. A lot of flowers that I paint have like a set number of petals, and you know that when you're painting them, you're like, okay, it's got this many petals. but not these ones. This one needs to come down a little lower, like that. So I'm just looking at where the petals are on my picture and starting to kind of sketch them out based on that, just following their shapes. When you're painting flowers, your flowers are probably not all going to have perfectly symmetrical petals all facing the same direction. They're going to be twisting and curving and some of them are not going to be fully exposed. You're only going to see like parts of it because it's folding over. So how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the eighth. So that helps you keep track as well. If you want to count your petals, then that'll help you. And there we go. All right, so our first one is roughly sketched out. This one goes behind, so we're gonna finish that petal next. All right, let's start with this one. Let's 
Some of the petals are a little wider and stick out a little bit more. And there's one under here. Also starting to fill in just a little bit of that purple where I know some of my flowers are in shadow. Just so I don't get lost later when I'm trying to figure out which petal goes where, I'll know, okay, this petal was in shadow, so that's definitely that petal from my picture. And then this one's in shadow. All right, now we got two sketched out. I've got one down here. This one's mostly in shadow. This whole plant, well, the whole left side of it is mostly in shadow. So think about the angles that your petals are coming out from the center. So if you see in your reference photograph, the angle is, always think of it with the horizon or with a vertical line. So I see that I'm looking at the horizon line here and I see that this petal is coming out at about a 45 degree angle and then it bounces up to a steeper angle like that. So if it's easier for you to sketch things in by keeping more geometric shapes and then softening them up later, you can do that. Just find a method that works for you and that is going to be the best thing to do. Whatever's the least frustrating. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now we got our three flowers sketched out and I'm just going to take a little bit of my oxide green with still a little bit of purple on the brush. It's not a big deal because we're just sketching things out and I'm just going to start to add a few petals, or not petals, uh, leaves, where I can see some actual shapes for them. You don't have to make your leaves too perfect because they're not the focus. Your flowers are the focus of this painting, so they're going to be more heavily detailed and the leaves are kind of just shapes in the background. So don't waste too much time trying to make your leaves be perfect. Just as long as your leaves are about the right size, that's the most important thing. So up here, our leaves are closer to the viewer. So, so these leaves are a little bit larger and they're almost about the size of the petals of the flowers actually. So if you're making your leaves this big up here, then you're, something's going to look off at the end. So just, you know, think about how big your leaves are in uh, relation to your flowers. Now we just got a bunch of shapes down here. We can't really fully tell each individual leaf apart. All right, there we go. So that's the main focus. That now we can get started with the background. All right, and I'm actually going to go to this brush, which is my larger flat tipped brush. So our background, I'm going to start with some burnt umber and some phthalo blue. I'm going to add a little flesh tint to that to brighten it up just a tad. And some ochre. 
All right, and then we're gonna do a line right about there. And another line about right here. So this is our fence in the background, and this line comes all the way down here. So you might see a little hint of it down here, but not too much. I'm gonna add a little more brown. Just start to fill that in. And we know this side of the fence post is in shadow. I'm just gonna pull this color up and down until I get that in there. And then this side is just black with, well, let's use a little bit of violet just to get it really dark. And you just wanna go basically right up to your flower petals just filling in all the empty space around your leaves and your petals. And you can even start to add that a little bit more between your leaves at the top. Because we can build, we can build some color on top of that later. But if we start with black, that's a nice base to work on top of. Okay, and you want to have a, a line here that's just up and down, and you want to go right over that other line as if it were to blend together like that. You don't want to have a sharp line there because this is out of focus, so we want to keep it nice and nice and smooth transition between the two. All right, and I'm just brightening that up a little bit. So it still stands out from the black. If you get the extra paint off your brush, then you can go over that line again and that just kind of blends it. All right, next we're gonna do more of that color on this side. Let's take a little more blue. from the fence post. Then we got some horizontal lines, one right here, another one right there, one right here, another one right there. Make sure your horizontal lines, so this is gonna be a shadowy spot, okay? So we want these to be about the same size because these are here are going to be our um, horizontal parts of the fence. <laughs> so we wanna keep these all about equal size. All right, good. Just trying to keep track of everything here. So let's keep this part in shadow. Can add a little more black if you wanna boost your shadow some. And if you start to accidentally go over one of your leaves or your flowers, that's okay, because we can always touch that up later. Then just take some of your black, mix with that little bit of purple, and we're putting some real deep shadows in here. Just try to keep your line nice and horizontal. This is, these are planks of wood, so we don't wanna have like squiggly lines, unless your wood is really uh, <laughs> worn out. <laughs> Maybe you're wood fence is very old and it's falling apart. <laughs> and we'll do one more up top. So these are all similar in size. And then we've got another little shadow up here. So I'll just put that in really quickly. A little bit there too. All right, now let's work on our Highlight portion of the fence, so we're gonna take our yellow ochre and our thalo blue and some white. And let's take some of our cadmium yellow medium and some flesh tint. And we'll just add that color right here. Just up and down and let it kind of blend in with the other colors. 
Same thing, fill in this section here. You want to try to work somewhat quickly here because your paint dries quickly when you use acrylics. If you're using oils, you don't have to worry about this. Um, but for acrylics, paint dries quickly and if you want it to blend out and look like it's out of focus, you just need to make sure you're working fast enough that you can still blend. add a little bit of raw umber or burnt umber to this one. And in general try to keep your wood grains horizontal here so keep your brush back and forth horizontally. Gonna mix a little more. Then we can add a couple little highlights just holding the brush this way. So not this way, but this way. And that'll give you that wood grainy look just by going right over top of what you have. It's still a little bit wet paint, so it's blending a little, but it's, and I'm also pressing a little harder here. So it's, um, oh, I guess this one would go up and down. Um, so it's, it's blending, but it because I'm pressing hard, it's moving the paint more. All right, that's good. Then we can take some black and brown and go over our shadow again. I'm just gonna blend that out. So I'm getting the extra paint off my brush. I'm going right over that. And it's just kind of blending it. There we go. So it's no longer in focus as much as it was before. I'm gonna take a little more brown here. Just build up that shadow again. Can build up this shadow some more too. Then you can just throw in some more random little shadows that may have made it on here. <laughs> to keep the background kind of interesting. Maybe some shadows from all the leaves and petals. For the leaves, I'm gonna use my medium flat tip brush. All right, so we're gonna start by just blending a couple different colors for the leaves, and then we'll start adding those colors to the canvas. So we're mixing my phthalo blue with my cadmium yellow medium and that is a very strong phthalo blue so I need to add way more <laughs> yellow just keep adding more yellow and you, everybody's paint is going to be different depending on the brand even from bottle to bottle and the brand the paint uh, strength is good the pigment strength is going to vary so just uh, you know play around with building up your colors so now we're at a good shadow color for the leaves. I'm also gonna take some of this oxide green and we'll take some of this pale yellow. And that's a good, another nice color for the leaves. And then let's take some of this pale green and our yellow. And that's a really nice vibrant highlight color. Very nice. All right. So now I got three colors to start with for my leaves. I'm gonna be mixing in a couple other colors there as well, but uh, just to get started, I think that's good. So we're gonna start with that darkest green first, and I'm just gonna start filling in some of these leaves that I sketched out before. And you wanna get a nice thick 
layer of paint on there. You don't want to be able to see through it, especially if you have a white, you started with a white canvas like I did here. It's almost like a mosaic, just filling in spaces. Oops. Yeah, don't let yourself get too worked up with this. Just kind of keep, keep playing around with it and your leaves will look beautiful. So for some of them, I'm just kind of outlining. Just put a little stem in there. This is pretty dark over here. So I am going to keep building up with these greens. So if you just start by just throwing some paint on here and then we'll keep working on building up the greens as we keep adding detail and separating the leaves, then you'll be, you'll be set. So just start throwing some this green down and we will be layering up these leaves with highlights and more shadows as we keep working. I can start to add a little bit on top of that black in here. Now let's take some phthalo blue and blend that in, add a little bit of burnt umber. And we can build some even deeper shadows in some spots. Tends to be darkest right around the flower petals because this is the spot where the leaves are right under the petals. So the, the petals are casting a shadow onto these leaves. Take some of our medium green, start to fill that in a few spots. You can start to overlap your leaves a little. Let's go to our bright green.
The bright green is kind of all over the place, just wherever any light is peeking through. It's not gonna ever be an entire leaf that's perfectly that bright green. There's going to be a shadow and a highlight on every leaf. depends on where the light peeks through and puts that nice little highlight on the leaf. Take a little bit of your chromide, your oxide green, chromium oxide green, and just blend that in so we can add our shadow on this leaf here. pale green in here. And right now, just try to make sure you're getting all of the white off the canvas where the leaves should be. If you end up missing a spot, that's okay. We can always come back to that later, but just try to make sure you're covering up all the white space wherever there would be a leaf. And we're gonna go back and once this layer dries, start to add a little bit more detail to the leaves. But uh, for now, we just wanna make sure we're, we've got some color down in all of these spots. It looks like I'm good here. Maybe, maybe just a little bit up here. Alrighty. So now let's start working on our flowers. So I'm cleaning off my brush really good and getting all the extra paint off the brush. I don't want to have any more green on the paintbrush. I want to have nice, clean brush. Alrighty. And we are going to start with, so all of these, sh these flowers have a portion of the petal that is in shadow and a portion that is highlighted by the sunlight. So let's find the best approach for this. And all of these flowers have a little bit of a different hue to them too. Like this one is a little bit of a cooler purple and these two are a little warmer purple. This one's definitely the warmest and most saturated. So let's start with this guy because he's the farthest in the background. Colors are going to be a little bit different for him too. So I just mixed my mauve purple with my uh, phthalo blue. I'm going to mix a little more phthalo blue. And I'm 
gonna make some violet. A little more thalo blue. A little more violet. I'm gonna have nice saturated but cool purple. Alright, I'd say that's pretty good. Hint more blue. Alright, very nice. Good color. So we're gonna do the shadow color first. So this leaf is in shadow. On this side, I'm just gonna fill in some base color for now. We're gonna go back, do some details later. And I'm also realizing that I made this petal too thick, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of green on the other side of it so I can make that be a leaf. <laughs> All right, good. And then this petal here is in shadow. For the most part, the whole leaf is in shadow. This, le this petal has some shadow in the central part of it. This petal is this petal here is mostly in shadow. This is a really pretty purple. And this big leaf. Also a lot in shadow. And this leaf in shadow. All right, I'm just gonna take some violet because there's an even deeper Shadow right here on this one. Just blend that in with my other purple. And I have a little bit of that violet right here. So everything's still wet. I'm just blending this violet in into my purple shadow color. It's like my even deeper shadow. And then this whole petal is that dark purple, except for that little tip right there. This is really dark shadow right there. And we got some more of the purple right here on this petal. Just kind of letting it blend. All right. Now let's just get that extra paint off the brush. You don't have to totally clean it off. We're gonna take some white, some magenta, and our mauve purple. And I'll take a little bit more of that white. And I'll take, I'll take a little bit of violet too. Yeah, that's good. And then this is gonna be our highlight. So we have this part of the flower where the light is reaching it. You just want to bring that right up to the center. Of each petal there. And wherever there's a little bit of light. 
reaching. This petal. It's pretty lit up. And then since we're using a flat tip brush, we can get that nice sharp edge. Anytime you want to blend, just take the extra paint off your brush and you can just blend it by lightly pressing and going back and forth over the spots that you want to blend. And we got that nice little highlight right there. And a highlight right here. And one right here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fix up this shadow I know is right here. I'm gonna add a little more magenta. I'm gonna take a little bit of my magenta and add that in the central part of some of these flowers. And a little bit more of my deep purple right there. And a little bit for underneath here. All right, so that's looking pretty good for now. We got our base colors in there. I'm gonna touch this one up just a hair too. So it doesn't get lost in the background. Okay, good, so that one's done. Now let's move on to this one. So this one, we've got some violet as our main shadow color under here. Got a shadow. Then it kind of warms up into that magenta. So you just blend a little magenta in with your violet. And then we've got more of that magenta. I'll add a hint of white. Magenta color here as our shadow. So we've got more of our violet color right here. But much more of this plant is actually in the light. A little bit of a shadow up here. And right here from a leaf, and then here. Okay, now we can make our highlights. I'm gonna take some of my flesh tint, white, and 
Violet. Be a little magenta. Nice warm purple. That one will go right here. If you want to lighten that up, just add a little more white. Mix a little magenta in right here. And a little on this side of the petal, just to separate these two petals there. And take the extra paint off. Touch up the contact between these shadows. And I'll add another little shadow here. Magenta color right here. The magenta color kind of just comes out from the center of each flower. All right, add a little more highlights. I think one of the trickiest things about this painting is just knowing which petal you're looking at and which petal you should be working on and not getting lost because there are a lot of petals. And then as you're working on your petals, you might start to notice spots that you missed before when you were adding your leaves. You may have missed a leaf. I noticed right there I missed one, so I'm just going to add a little bit of oxide green with black and phthalo blue here just to darken that up. Put a little shadow in there. Okay, and then we basically got this leaf. Let me add a little more magenta right here and then we'll say that we basically got the white covered up and we figured out where our shadows and highlights are on that leaf or that flower. <laughs> All right, now let's work on this one down here. So we're gonna take some violet plus magenta. A little more violet and that'll be our shadow color for here. Eh, a little more violet actually, here we go. This one goes over top of that other leaf petal. <laughs> Another one right here. And another shadow here. Violet. 
for a deeper shadow down here. Now we'll go back to mixing in our magenta for these ones. Shadows at the base. Right there too. And then we'll just take some violet where it's really dark right around the center of the flower. And I'm gonna do that up here too. I see it's really dark. Right up there on all of our flowers. Just kind of blends that, blends out into your other colors. Alrighty, and let's go with our highlight colors. So we're gonna take some flesh tint, white, magenta. Let's try this Bordeaux red. Let's see what that does. Eh, no, I don't like that color. <laughs> let's take some more magenta and a little bit of mauve. I'll do a little more white. And we'll start to add our highlight colors here. This one's nice and it really is closer to pink, this one. It's purple to pink with our highlight. And again, just kind of let your highlight Cover up parts of your shadow and blend in with other parts. Make sure you're keeping your petals separated by adding another shadow between them or bringing your highlight down just so you don't get lost. Just so the petals can you know, be separate from one another and you can tell where one petal starts and another petal starts. <laughs> Add some more white, a little bit of violet. It's a little cooler up here. I'm gonna blend my shadow color with my highlight color and get like a nice medium value for a couple spots here. And then like I said before, we gotta kind of separate these petals a bit. See how these three are all kind of, it's hard to tell where each one ends. So I just add this little shadow right there. And we just keep working on this and until we feel like we got everything to the right proportion and we got our shadows and our highlights in the right spot. Just 
taking some pure magenta and adding that in there. Gonna do that again down here. I'll go over that deep violet shadow one more time here. Okie doke. So in general we know where our highlights and our shadows are on the flowers. Now you want to clean off your brush really good. And we'll put that to the side and we're going to switch to our, uh, our small round tipped brush. So now we're going to work on the inner parts of the flower. So I'm going to start with my highlight and then I'm going to add the shadow because if I do the shadow first and then the highlight over it, it's going to blend and get mucky. So we have our uh, cadmium yellow, oh sorry, hold on one sec. All right, so we have our yellow ochre. We're going to mix that with some white and a little bit of our chamomile medium. And that's a good middle color. I'm also gonna take some more white and that'll be a good highlight color. So I'm gonna start with the highlights. Some of these, uh, uh, what are these things called, sepals? <laughs> what are these things called that um, they stick out here? Uh, so I'm just gonna start with those and I'm gonna if you have an even finer brush, that's better. With a finer brush, finer tipped brush you got, the better you're gonna be here, because we have a bunch of these little things that just, it looks like an anemone. <laughs> but it's the inner part of the flower. And I'm just going to do some squiggly little lines here, all going in different directions, nothing's perfectly facing one way. They're not all parallel. They kind of all come out from the center. Just starting with that highlight color. And I started on this flower because everything is mostly dry by now on this flower. You don't want to start adding this highlight if you still have wet paint because it's going to blend and you're going to lose your nice bright yellow. And you just let this come all the way around like that. And then we start to do some of the inner parts here. So basically I'm just going to fill it in with that color in like a central spot, like where we had our onion at first. And then we can do our shadows and our middle tones. So I'm going to put some yellow in here and just let this go up. We can start the yellow at the base of some of these, but don't bring it all the way out. Then we're going to mix some burnt umber with a little bit of, let's use black. And then use some white too, so that it's not too dark. And then we're going to Put a couple little lines there that would basically be in shadow. You can start some of the bases like they were in shadow. And 
And a couple more right there too. And then we'll just go over that again with our yellow. And then with our highlight, you want to go really lightly with the paint here. You want to you want to use a good thick amount of paint, but you want to really lightly touch the canvas so that it doesn't drag and blend in, but it just glides over top of that shadow color. All right, there we go. We'll let that dry for a bit and move to the next one. Same thing. Want to get our little antenna, whatever these things are, looking things. And just fill in that center part again. And then we take our yellow, start to add some lines. And at the bases. Take our shadow color, add some shadows. back over with some yellow again. And our highlight again, which is just white with a little bit of that cadmium yellow medium. do this guy down here. Start with our highlight. Just very, very lightly dragging the paint and I'm letting it paint letting the paintbrush kind of twirl a little to get all the extra paint off of the brush while I'm working. in that center. Take our yellow. And take our shadow color.
And then let's go back over with our yellow again. Then with our highlight. Okie doke. So we're going to let those dry for a bit while we just start to do a little bit more to our leaves. I keep using my smaller brush. I'm going to mix my cadmium yellow medium with my pale green. And we're going to build up some of these highlights. Let's add a little bit of white in there. Nice and bright highlight. And then we're just going to add that kind of spots where the sun's really casting some light. You can start to add it along the edges of the leaves because they have these kind of like little border, bright border spots on them. Take some more yellow. spots back here that are nice and bright. And I'm just kind of picking some random spots on these leaves to choose what will be in the sun. Got like a middle green here that doesn't have that yellow.
take some more of my oxide green. Just start to, it has a little bit of that pale green blended in as well. I'm just kind of adding a little bit more color, building up the leaves a bit more. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, if you are feeling like, man, this is the hardest thing I've ever done, there's so much going on in this painting and it's overwhelming, then this is a good point to basically be done. There's just one more thing I wanna to touch up real quick before I let you go. I would do just a little bit, take your violet and just build up the shadows again at the base of your flower right around the middle part there and just really thickly get that violet on your brush but lightly push it onto the canvas so that it doesn't blend in with your other colors there So yeah, so if you're if you're like, okay, that's all I can handle, then this is a good point for you to stop. Uh, but I am gonna continue working on this and adding more detail. So if you are the type of person like me that really likes to go into detail, then we're gonna keep on keeping on here. Um, but if you feel like, wow, that was way too much, then you're welcome to stop. This is a good stopping point. <laughs>